What's going on, guys? And welcome back to some more Super Luigi Galaxy. In the last part, we finished the uh, Grease Flame Galaxy. In this part, we're going to do the last galaxy in the bedroom. Now, it's another than, um... Yeah, the Dusty Dune Galaxy. I'm going to come out and say this. This is my least favorite galaxy in the whole game. Like, um... There's others I find bad, but, like, um... This one I find bad because it's mostly tedious. This is Soaring on the Desert Wind. And also, there are more stars in this galaxy than any other galaxy in the game. So, uh, I think I'm, the only exception is Battle Rock. So, um, not only did I find this galaxy tedious, I also don't like the amount of stars. Because there's not one, but two secret stars. And on top of that, there is two, uh, there's two Dare to, there's two, uh, Prankster comics, which we'll get into the other one later. But, uh... Yeah, so the gist of it is, this galaxy is going to be a two-parter, but, uh... These are, these are these tornadoes, and basically, uh, you shake the Wii Remote, basically go in the air, and if you fall in the quicksand, it's instant death, so, uh, make sure not to do that. Anyway, so you want to go from, a uh, twister to twister, and I don't think I'm going to be able to... That one's just a one-up, so it's not even worth it. I probably should have gone for that one, but, uh... I'm not going to make the other one, so I guess I get the one-up after all. Can I actually make that uh, pipe right there? I, like I said, this galaxy is very tedious. It's probably why it's my least favorite galaxy in the whole game. Maybe, I think, I'd say, like, Sling Pod Galaxy I, is the one exception where I find this wor that worse. But that's a one-star galaxy. It's a Hungry Luma, so... Imagine doing six consecutive stars in this galaxy. So, uh, yeah, I just never per I just never really liked this galaxy at all, basically. And uh, I think if you go up here... You get squished! But either way, there was a... Uh, what am I trying to say? Either way, there was a uh, health extension. So I guess I'm going to go grab that. Die, Goombas! Or maybe you'll go and live... Or you'll die anyway, but... um. Yeah, let's try this again. Alright, uh, wait till they go down. I think actually if you go on top of them, there's a one-up. Let me just double check. Yeah, if you go up top of them, there's a one-up. And there's also a thing we can get star bits. So, uh, maybe I should have just gone the normal route. But, uh... Yeah, there's a thing we can get star bits and a health extension. So I guess that's a not a bad area to go up. And again, we have to get those switches that are down a uh, thwomp. Now, the thwomps are a lot more dangerous in this game than they are in, say, Mario 64 because they insta-kill you. At least, that's just star bits. So we're, we, we can take some star bits. I love me some star bits next, as much as the next guy. So yeah, I would say a major this playthrough is about uh, two thirds of the way done in terms of the normal game. There's still a lot of side galaxies and uh, other stuff we have to do or in earlier galaxies, but that's much later on. If you think about it, also with like some of the some of the soundtrack and some of the characters, a lot did begin with like Mario Galaxy One and all that. That. Might be why I come back, I often come back to this game, is because, like, Ro Rosalina was introduced in Mario Galaxy, she'd become a staple of the franchise, and Captain Toad was introduced in this game, he'd become a staple of the franchise. A lot of the songs in this game also appear in, like, Super Mario 3D Land and Super Mario 3D World and all that, so, um, I probably shouldn't have gotten those star bits, but anyway, so, um... God, this galaxy is so long-winded, but, um... Now we're going to try to see. These are these uh, chicken things that drop bombs. They shit out bombs, which that can't be health. That can't be healthy. They're having, instead of having eggs, they're just dropping fucking bombs. And I thought I was going to get up there, but nope, not today. Alright, get up there and get up there. Now, this area is pretty annoying. I almost died right away, but uh, you have to kind of um, get this question mark thing over here. Which I failed to do. And then you have to kind of use these launch stars to get up on the uh, twister, and then you have to 
get up there. Well, you get star bits, so I guess that's not all bad. But uh, you have to you have to do some well timed wall jumps too. So uh, all right. So all right, we got a one up out of this, and you have to time. I always found that jump also really annoying because um, you have to uh, you have to you have to wall jump at the right time. And uh, finally, we're still not done yet because we still have to get the star that's, that's uh, in the glass while being while we're dealing with moving quicksand. Anyway, so. That was the first star in a Desert Dunes galaxy. If we didn't even get it, because some, sometimes you can die trying to get the star, which that has happened to me before. So anyway, a hungry Luma has appeared, which we'll tackle that eventually. So yeah, we'll get we'll get we'll get through the hungry Luma eventually. But uh, now the the second galaxy in Dusty Dune Galaxy, um, I actually find even worse than the first one because there's a uh, yeah, it's this one, blast into the sand. Now this star also has a speedy comet, so because of this, um, I find this to be one of my least favorite stars to get in the whole game. Like, it's not only long-winded, but there's a speed run to this also, so... I don't know, I might be in a... I'm not... I don't really hear, like, Dusty Dune Galaxy be called... I, I, I've i heard this called a bad galaxy. I don't really call, hear this called the worst galaxy in the game, because I often hear say I often hear people say, like, Sling Pod Galaxy or a later galaxy we're going to tackle much later in the game. But, um... For some reason, I never liked this galaxy at all. Hold on, if you time it right, if you, if you time that right, you can actually jump on him, which I'm failing to do, but, um, yeah, if you just time, jump on his head, you can basically get Starbucks that way. So, yeah, this is where the, uh, this is all, this galaxy is, this star is also where the first of the two, um, secret stars are, because there's one, there's, uh, two secret stars in this world. The, basically, the, the thing I never liked about this world is that it's very, this galaxy is very long-winded. Like, this, this is not something I'm going to get through in one part, basically. Like, it would take, like, 40 minutes. It takes, like, 40 minutes to this fucking galaxy. But anyway, we got Rainbow Luigi, so... Can we get a 1-up? Can we get a 1-up? Okay, we got a 1-up. We, we just got the 1-up, but anyway... Can I get the... Anyway, so you want to go up there, and there's the Hungry Luma, but we'll save that for later. If we get the Secret Star. Now, we want to do it moving... Excuse me! Now, anyway, we want to do it the uh, moving quicksand. We have to do it moving quicksand. We have to get blue star chips. So, thankfully, I know from years of playing this game where I know where they are. But, um... There's the first one. There's the second one. We're gonna get in that, uh... I like to get this one first. There's the uh, third one, and I like to kind of try to see if I can, uh... I like to always, like, try to see if I can get those, uh, star chips in one, uh, roundabout. Yeah, like that. But we're not gonna get... And then just get the pulsars on the second roundabout. So, uh, yeah, it's a nice... That's a nice way of doing it. Where's that? Okay, there it is. So yeah, that wasn't too bad. That also helps if you're trying to do the speed run challenge of this. Now I like to go the green, the green, um, the green leads to the de the um, normal star with the orange leads to a bonus. I'm gonna just show the bonus because I can't when I'm doing the speed run of this, the speedy comet. Actually, it's the orange that leads. So it's the green that leads the secret. So uh. I got the two mixed up. I probably shouldn't get the coins. We're not going to get 50 coins in this level. Now, there's going to be mini tornadoes. And some of them are going to have, like, spikes attached to them. Where, like, uh, they kind of count as a hit. I'm going to get this one up. 
Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Okay. I almost died right there, but uh I got stuck in the tornado, but uh On. All right, we're good. So we have to go all the way. We're not even in the right area. Oh yeah, we are in the right area. Because we have to kind. Of, this is kind of a bit confusing if you take the. I think where you end up also depends on what path you took earlier. But uh, we have to go here, so we can uh get out of, get rid get out of the way of these assholes. And uh. And uh, hit this blue switch. Excuse me! Okay, you don't want to run out of time, so, um... No, I don't want to get sucked into you. You have plenty of time to do this, but eventually time's gonna run out, so... Alright. Alright, that was the star, so, uh... Yeah, so this is going to be a shorter part, so actually I'm going to do the, uh, I'm just going to show the secret star and call it that. A new chapter has been added to the storybook, so yeah, fuck that, I'm ending the video on the new chapter. Because that's the dark chapter I was mentioning. An iconic moment of Sumer Galaxy, so I'll cut to the library. Alright, we're at the library. I think it's the second to last chapter that's the darkest of them all. I think this is the one I'm talking about. Let us begin. And we'll do my narration skills, or lack thereof. Chapter 7, The Telescope. Oh, this is it. After seeing the hundredth comet, a sudden thought popped into the girl's head. I wonder if my home planet is still as blue as it was. Then she remembered her father's telescope. Peeking into the telescope, a tiny blue dot filled flow was into sight. It was smaller than a star bit. How strange, it's so far away, but it feels so close. She twisted the knob of the telescope and the blue dot grew until she could make out a grassy hill dot with flowers. It seemed very familiar to her. Zooming even closer, a terrace on the hill came to view. I used to go stargazing there when I lived on my home planet. Oh. She remembered rubbing the sleep out of her eyes and she followed her fall up until the hall looked at the stars. She remembered how she and her brother would slide sled down that hill. She remembered having picnics with her mother in the hell on bright and windy days. And Oh, here it comes. I want to go home. I want to go home right now. The girl bursts into, te burst into tears and the Loomis didn't even know what to do. I want to go home. I want to go back to my house by the hill. I want to see my mother. The girl is shouting out with her face wet with tears. But I know she's not there. And I knew all along that she wasn't out there in the sky because... because She's sleeping under the tree on the hill. The girl's cries echoed through the stars and a hush fell over the area. Oh god, like... That should do it for today, but like... When I first saw that, like, uh, message when I was like eight or nine years old... I friggin' went into tears, let's just say, and I was still choking up reading that dialogue, but like... That is like one of the that's probably the darkest part of Super Mario Galaxy in my in my honest opinion. Like uh, it's well written and like uh, really a sad tale of Rosalina. But anyway, we're gonna cut it off for this part of Super Luigi Galaxy. So next time on Super Luigi Galaxy, we're just gonna finish the Dusty Dune Galaxy. See you guys then.